Today we're going to talk about photorespiration. Photorespiration is a process that occurs in C3 plants on hot, dry days when stomata are closed. This is when CO2 would be at low concentration. Remember that CO2 comes into the plant through the stomata, so closing the stomata on hot, dry, hot, dry days reduces the amount of CO2 that can get into the plant. The CO2 that's present will be used in the Calvin cycle until it is at low concentration. What happens with photorespiration? Photorespiration sidetracks the Calvin cycle by fixing oxygen instead of CO2, creating a two-carbon compound that cannot be used to produce energy in the cell. The two-carbon compound gets broken down in the peroxisomes in the mitochondria. But, unlike the breakdown of sugars, the breakdown of this two-carbon product does not produce ATP. The process actually consumes ATP, costing the cell energy. So why does photorespiration happen? In conditions of, it has to do with the characteristics of rubisco. In conditions of low CO2, these would be the hot, dry days when the stomata are closed, rubisco will bind oxygen instead of CO2. When oxygen's at higher levels, rubisco will bind it instead of CO2. Although rubisco has a higher affinity to bind CO2, it will bind oxygen instead when the concentration of oxygen is higher than that of CO2. When rubisco binds oxygen, it pulls oxygen into the Calvin cycle by mistake and fixes it. It fixes it into two carbon compound. Why does photorespiration exist? It might be, it's thought to be an evolutionary relic, meaning that it's a relic of the early Earth, created by the early Earth's atmosphere under which photosynthesis originally evolved. That atmosphere would have high CO2 and low oxygen. In that atmosphere, there would be no selective pressure against variants of rubisco that can bind oxygen when carbon dioxide is not available. Because in that early atmosphere, there always would have been more CO2 than oxygen present in the mesophyll cells of the plant. So is photorespiration all bad? Although it seems to be an evolutionary relic, it has been found that plant mutants that can't carry out photorespiration are susceptible to the type of damage incurred by exposure to excess light. It's possible that photorespiration acts to neutralize damaging byproducts of the light reaction and reactive oxygen species that are known to be formed in conditions of excess UV exposure. So now we've learned all about photorespiration, but what about plants that are always in hot, sunny, or dry conditions? Remember, for C3 plants, photorespiration will only occur once in a while. But what about plants that are always in hot, sunny, or dry conditions? Things like sugarcane, corn, and grass. These have developed alternate means of carbon fixation that don't replace the Calvin cycle, but serve to minimize photorespiration while enhancing the efficiency of the Calvin cycle. The first set of plants that we're going to talk about are C4 plants. C4 plants are sugarcane, corn, and grass. They're plants that grow in hot regions that have intense sunlight. C4 plants are recognizable by their unique leaf anatomy. They have rows of mesophyll cells surrounding a column of cells called bundle sheath cells. These bundle sheath cells themselves surround the vascular bundle or vein of the leaf. The mesophyll cells and bundle sheath cells are physically connected to each other by means of plasmodesmata. Remember that plasmodesmata are those cell-to-cell -cell openings that link the cytoplasms of cells together in plants. C4 leaf anatomy functions to allow the mesophyll cells to fill the bundle sheath cells with CO2 by incorporating it into a four-carbon intermediate and sending it through the plasmodesmata. This keeps the CO2 concentration in the bundle sheath cells high enough that rubisco 
will bind it instead of oxygen. Now, in these plants, rubisco is only produced in the bundle sheath cells. How does it work? Well, let's look at this in detail. A special enzyme called PEP carboxylase, PEP stands for phosphoenolpyruvate. The special enzyme called PEP carboxylase is only present in the mesophyll cells, and it catalyzes the addition of a CO2 to a three carbon compound called phosphoenolpyruvate. PEP carboxylase has a much higher affinity for CO2 than rubisco does, and it has absolutely no affinity at all for binding oxygen. So it's the perfect enzyme to put to work in these outer mesophyll cells. It can work in conditions of low CO2, in which rubisco would be inefficient. After the CO2 is fixed by adding it to phosphoenolpyruvate, it is transformed into oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate is transformed into malate. Malate is a four carbon compound that then travels through the plasma desmata to the bundle sheath cells. Once in the bundle sheath cells, the CO2 is released from the malate. Pyruvate, a three carbon compound, is regenerated. We'll come back to that in a minute. So what happens to the CO2? Well, remember that rubisco is present in these bundle sheath cells. And in the high concentrations of CO2, rubisco will do its job correctly and put that CO2 right into the Calvin cycle. The continual influx of the four carbon compound into the cell keeps the concentration of CO2 high in the bundle sheath cells. The CO2 then enters the carbon cycle, is attached to RUBP by rubisco, and the Calvin cycle proceeds normally, producing glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, our sugar, which can then be transformed into either starch or into sucrose and sent into the vascular tissue. Let's go back up to this pyruvate. Notice that the removal of CO2 from malate produces pyruvate, which is a three-carbon compound. Along with the molecule of ATP, pyruvate travels back through the plasma desmata into the mesophyll cells, where a phosphate group is added to it from ATP to regenerate the starting compound, phosphoenolpyruvate. Well, where does this ATP come from? The ATP, sorry about that, the ATP comes from the bundle sheath cells. The bundle sheath cells express photosystem 1, and that's the only photosystem they have. And they use cyclic electron flow, which generates ATP, if you remember that from our previous discussions. And that cyclic electron flow produces the ATP that, with the pyruvate, travels back to the mesophyll cells to regenerate our phosphoenopyruvate. And that is, well, stay tuned for the next video in which we'll discuss the second photosynthetic adaptation to hot, dry conditions, CAM, or Crassulian acid metabolism.